Google recently announced another update of its AI called BARD. Not lots of people use it, but whoever uses it is saying that's much better than ChatGPT. I'm very curious, so here is my reaction. The first time trying out BARD. Some part of it is really good, some part is quite interesting, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like. In this video, I'm gonna analyze different kind of use cases, user experience, and also business model of BARD. Stay until the end of the video and check out the latest use cases and let me know if you agree with me or not. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product and feature in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. In this channel, I cover tech trends and product management knowledge. Like and subscribe and turn the bell button so you'll be notified every time I turn a new video every Tuesday. The first use case I searched on BARD is actually the search result accuracy. I started introducing very easy use cases such as find the top Cuban restaurant in Miami and actually Bard gave me really good answers and also gave me lots of good pictures. So now let's switch to Bard. So I logged into Bard and the first thing I put in is what's the top Cuban restaurant in Miami? It gave me several good options, really good ones. And it, it is very true. Actually, Vasalia's restaurant, it is the best Miami restaurant uh, for Cuban. And it's, to, to be frank, it's also a little bit tourist, tourist attraction. So I'm not surprised there's a number one and all other ones is very great, all the top ones. And I asked what is the most popular dishes on Old Havana's Cuban bar and restaurants and it gave me several good recipes but the picture was incorrect that's a little bit unhappy but the best part is it can link to trip advisor and show me all the details of different kind of like dishes by that restaurant so i'm pretty happy about it and then i asked so what's the most expensive cocktail on old havana's menu and uh, and it gave me very good answer saying well this is called el presidente did i pronounce correctly uh, uh, and this cost $25. Whoever knows how to pronounce it, teach me, please. And yeah, it, it, the best part is also give me pictures with backlink. This is what I like the most about bar. When I asked ChatGPT the same questions, it gave me similar restaurants. The top restaurant is the same, but Old Havana, it doesn't exist on the list anymore. And the biggest problem is it doesn't give me a backlink or pictures to those uh, restaurants. So that's something I don't I don't think is as good. My biggest complaint about ChatGPT is that ChatGPT only have old data and doesn't have the latest information about people, about small businesses. And so therefore I asked Bar this question, do you know who is Dr. Nancy Lee? Which is me. And it actually gave me good result. And it found me very quickly, who is Dr. Nancy Lee? I'm one of the top three choices. And of course I choose Dr. Nancy Lee, a founder of PM Accelerator, this one, and then I asked it to give him a full bio. Yeah, the third one is who I'm looking for, give me the full bio. It give me a really good bio of who is Dr. Nancy Lee. And majority of this is correct and also very well written. And I'm considering using this as my personal bio, you know, how the speaking engagement. Um, they talking about like Dr. Nancy Lee founder program manager accelerator training program. Um, for aspiring product managers, also keynote speaker at a frequent contributor to publications such as Forbes and TechCrunch, um, and graduate of Stanford at University of Pennsylvania Wharton School. This is not me, and this is the only thing that's incorrect. But most of the things are right, including my personal journey, such as moved to the US with $800 and then became one of the youngest director product at Fortune Fashion Companies. And this is exactly like the correct. This, this is crazy. Heidi and also talk about PMA's highly rated product manager training program as part of my bio and help thousands of people land PM job offer at top tech companies. Uh, it's, it's great. Also give a summary accomplishment, PMA, founders, help thousand people land job at top tier companies, spoke at conferences and feature on Forbes, TechCrunch. I definitely like it and give it like awesome. But when I asked the same question to ChatGPT, it just couldn't tell me because the training data was cut off by September 2021. That's actually my biggest complaint about ChatGPT, not able to bring the latest information. And so when I read those bio, I was super, super impressed. The reason is, wow, this is like even better than how I write it myself. Amazing. You should check it out by putting your name as well. See what Bard can tell about you and how much it is true. Comment down below. I love to learn. Now, the third use cases I test out with Bard is actually ask, is product manager Excel better than part of school? Because to be frank, if you ask ChatGPT, ChatGPT doesn't even know what's product manager accelerator because the data was cut off two years ago. But Bard had really good comprehensive answer and I love it. It's product manager accelerator better than product school. The first time ever I asked Bard and give me this, it's like mind blowing, mind blowing, mind blowing. First of all, talk about pros and cons for both schools, PM accelerator, 
smaller class size, more popular, most personal attention from directors, more hands-on experience, more from the technical aspect for the management. Um, and this is all super correct. Now, how do they know my class size? How do they even know? Do you talk to my old students? This is amazing. That's exactly correct. Yes, it's more uh, small class size and, and they mentioned more expensive, uh, not as well known, not as many alumni. So now I agree with the other two. More expensive, I disagree because we're different tiers and actually our lowest tier double the value and half the price of quite a school because we offer way more in terms of job referrals and also unlimited three times three mock interviews. So therefore I disagree with this. Uh, it's probably comparing chicken to eggs, but everything else is very spot on and very impressed. Now talking about product school, talking about larger product, uh, size, less personalized attention, less hands-on experience, more focus on uh, not as much on technical aspect for the management, and then also talk about all the differences putting the table. This is amazing, and then you can export the Excel sheet. Is this, 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 this blown my mind? You should actually check it out yourself, um, do any kind of comparison and I guarantee you it's going to blow your mind. So this is just like mind blown in terms of the context and accuracy of the information. And again, majority of the information is correct by Bard. And I believe one of the reasons it was correct was because it has more personalized information. They know our Gmail, they know our search history, whatever we watch on YouTube. That's why it's more accurate, more personalized compared with ChatGPT. The second category I test out is the user experience. Actually, the biggest aspect of consumers like us who use it on a day-to-day -day basis, user experience is one of the most important thing. The number one lacking aspect of Bard is it doesn't save my chat history. I accidentally close the browser and I log in again, all my chat history History was gone and I had to regenerate again well that's one of the things they can improve and the second user experience actually is very beautiful in terms of giving you the links to any menus and if you search restaurant and give you the picture of things you're looking for if you ask for a picture to display any picture it can give you a picture as well so it is very powerful I definitely give a much higher rating of user experience compared with ChatGPT because I asked the same thing with ChatGPT. It just said, I cannot do it. You can just search those pictures by yourself and then go back to Google again. So it's a loop. The third category I like to talk about is the distribution channel and also business model. And as someone who specializes in product strategy, I'm very interested in understanding how can we drive more users to use certain type of product. And even if currently, if you ask Bart how many users, how many daily active users that Bart has right now, they won't tell you is that it's not public information. However, if you ask Bart what the daily active user of ChatGPT will tell you it has 6 million daily active users as if April this year. I think Bart definitely hasn't reached that level yet was because Google haven't advertised it, hasn't pushed it. And now here's how I predict how Google is going to design the go-to-market strategy for Bart. First of all, let's think about it. Google has access to all the distribution channel, which is the user will have maps and Gmail, YouTube, everything, and search engine on Google. Whenever it's ready to push bar to everybody, and on top of your browser, it's going to have a bar saying, why don't you search the same result on bar? And immediately going to convert millions of users to Google bar right away. So it will be significantly higher than 6 million daily active users. And the second type of business model Google like to go, I believe it's going to be ads and pay sponsorship. For example, right now you can see all the links of Yelp, and TripAdvisor on all the restaurant menu I just searched. What if it gave the option to Yelp saying, that, well, you can choose to put your links in one of my search results, or I can also advertise TripAdvisors. Which one would you like to bid for these opportunities? And it's very likely all those companies gonna have those AI bot integration and put all their front pages to be displayed on top of Google Bard. And that will become even more dangerous because Google will control the optimization result they can display to other people and then whoever pay for the search result is going to tweak what do we think is the best outcome should be another aspect chat gpt is more generic is more authentic because it's not influenced by any ads at this moment we're just at the very beginning of using google ai and i believe it's going to be very powerful so therefore as a consumer it's our responsibility to decide where to give your personal data and in the future i believe that there shouldn't be only one ai engine that can control all the data there should be multiple ai companies that utilize the data in a different way so therefore, as a consumer, it's more important we decide how to give our data to who and whether we will be compensated by giving our data away. 
So comment down below. Do you agree with me? And make sure to search yourself, search any interesting topic on Bard, and comment down below and learn about it as well. If you're in the process of landing your next PM job offer in top tier companies, you should go to our website to get free referrals. Put your resume in the hands of hiring managers. I'm going to link in the description of this video. Provide free job referrals to, for all of you guys. If you want to upgrade your career and learn different kind of AI tools, feel free to go to this playlist and explore different kind of technology I have discovered. And like and subscribe. Watch the next video right here. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMX30.io. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.